For this video, I want to go over several different ways that you can raise your aquarium pH, GH and KH levels. If you have soft tap water like me, then these methods may be able to help you keep guppies, platies, African cichlids, rainbow fish and other popular species that prefer hard water. First up, you can do your water changes using tap water from a high pH area and this may be a lot easier than you think. Here's a map showing the water distribution in England and Wales and I assume many other countries have something similar to this. This is my area and as you can see, my city has four different pH levels directly out of the tap. Where I live, the water is mostly soft, but just a short walk to my parents' house puts me in a moderately hard water zone. I can easily fill up containers at their house for water changes, giving me hard water right away. I know this may not be an option for everyone, but I didn't even know this was possible until I started doing research for this video. Personally, I'm planning on giving this a try with a guppy tank next year to see how it works because one of my friends in the hobby who keeps guppies and lives very close to my parents and has the same tap water as them and their guppies are totally fine. Next up we have mineral salts and I currently use my shrimp salt in all of my shrimp tanks to boost the GH levels ensuring my shrimp can mould safely as they grow. There's plenty of different options of these on the market tailored for shrimp, guppies, cichlids and other fish with each of them offering optimal calcium to magnesium ratios as required. Since different products work in different ways it is important to choose one designed for the specific species you plan to keep. For example, this cichlid salt will increase water hardness but it won't significantly affect your pH so you won't be able to notice the difference on a pH test kit. On the other hand, Taiwan B shrimp salts increase GH without raising the pH above 6.5 or affecting your KH meeting the needs of these sensitive shrimp. Neocaridina shrimp salts like the ones I use can raise your pH to around 7.5 and provide the right calcium to magnesium ratio for successful molten. Sulawesi shrimp salts can raise your pH up to 8.5 as well as increase GH and KH to meet the needs of these hard water shrimp. Depending on why you're adjusting your pH, you may be able to use specific mineral salts to achieve your desired results. Just keep in mind that some products like the Taiwan B shrimp salts are recommended for use with reverse osmosis water because they are particularly sensitive shrimp. Next up we have rocks like Sirius stone which release minerals into your aquarium water gradually increasing the pH levels. Even a small amount of Sirius stone can gradually increase pH, GH and KH making these stones a popular choice for people with soft tap water who are looking to keep hard water fish. This type of stone can raise your pH to a maximum of 8.5 but the time it takes will depend on your tank's KH level. Regular partial water changes can help maintain a stable pH range and prevent it from climbing too high if needed. Genuine Siryu stone is from Japan but unfortunately the Japanese government has banned it from export since 2008. As a result, stones sold as Siryu stone outside of Japan can often be substitutes and it can be difficult to find the exact origin or mineral composition leading to varying results. I use Siryu stone in my old guppy tank and it did work surprisingly well so it is something that I do plan to try again in future guppy tanks. Next up we have crushed coral which I used to use to increase pH levels in one of my old guppy tanks. Crushed coral is a natural way to increase pH levels and it will usually max out at a pH of around 8.3 when used in large amounts. It will also increase GH and KH levels but these can be more unpredictable because different types of coral from different regions are often mixed together in different batches. 
This unpredictability makes crushed coral less ideal for shrimp as they usually require specific calcium to magnesium ratios for optimal molten as they grow but it can still be an effective way to increase pH for fish. Another advantage of crushed coral is its low price as it can be very budget friendly and a small 100 gram bag managed to last me almost 6 months in my 12 gallon guppy tank. I've placed it both in the background of my tank hidden out of sight and in a small bag placed inside of the filter and both methods work well. Over time the coral does dissolve into your tank's water so you will need to check it on a regular basis to monitor how much remains and then replace it as required. Next up we have commercial pH buffers like API's pH up and proper pH products. I've tried both of these in previous tanks and while they did raise pH levels as advertised something fell off with the tank after adding them. According to the safety sheets, pH up's main ingredient is sodium carbonate while proper pH 7.5 contains sodium thiosulfate and tetrasodium salt. After using pH up, my fish and shrimp both became hyperactive and I ended up doing a large water change after a couple of days to normalise the tank and things went back to normal. Proper pH 7.5 wasn't as extreme but I did notice the fish flashing against plants in the tank as if something was irritating them. I followed the dosing instructions as guided on the product but I do suspect it was something to do with the ingredients or the rapid pH shift at the time of use which caused the issue as I haven't experienced any of these side effects with other methods. These products were among the first things I tried to raise the pH in my tanks but I don't plan on using them again since the other methods mentioned earlier in the video have worked well without any problems. The next method for raising your aquarium's pH involves removing something rather than adding something to the tank. Substrates like aqua soil and certain types of driftwood can gradually lower the pH levels of your tank. If you have hard tap water but you notice that your pH is passively decreasing then either of these could be the culprit. While aquasoil is popular in the hobby and driftwood enhances the look of planted tanks they can contribute to low pH levels that potentially can become a problem. Iwagumi style aquascapes don't use any driftwood at all and can still look stunning and there's plenty of planted tank styles that don't require driftwood at all. Alexander from the Fish Tree channel is a great example of this type of tank as his tanks feature an absolute ton of plants and a lot of them don't have any driftwood and to my eyes they look fantastic. Driftwood and aquasoil could both counteract some of the earlier recommendations in the video too such as Sirius Stone. If you are trying to raise your tank's pH, consider inert substrates like Carib Seas Eco Complete or dirt capped with sand or gravel and try and remove any driftwood. To provide a more complete overview, I do want to briefly mention Aragonite and Cuttlebone, but in the interest of full disclosure, I've never used either of these two products in any of my own tanks. From what I understand, aragonite can be used as a substrate to passively increase pH to around 8.2 or you can place it in a bag and add it to your filter and it'll dissipate over time. Cuttlebone on the other hand is typically broken into pieces and placed out of sight in the tank or inside the filter where it will gradually increase pH to around 7.8. There's plenty of forum posts out there with people sharing their experiences with both of these if you do want to do more research so depending on your setup one of these may be the best option for you. Just to wrap things up and yes all of these can raise your aquarium's pH but in many cases it's a specific balance of minerals that actually matters especially for shrimp keeping. I absolutely love guppies and I'd love to find a reliable way to maintain stable pH, GH and KH levels for them in the future. That's why I'm leaning more towards collecting water from my parents house who live in a hard water area and storing it at my house for a future guppy tank. Mineral salts are another good option since they're specifically designed to meet the needs of certain species. 
The other methods either work slowly or have inconsistent mineral ratios making it more difficult to predict your results. However, depending on your setup, one of these other methods might still be the best option for your tank. Anyway guys, that brings the video to an end. I hope it's been helpful. Thanks for watching and have a good day.